Um, for some reason, it's not letting me share my screen. It says that you've disabled participant screen sharing. Hello, Tim. Uh, yeah, you hey, can be now. Rachel. Hey, how's everybody? Try, try back now, back before to Rachel. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. I am. Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, that was a fun trip with the little one. Oh, it was so beautiful. Yes. Thank you. We can get started, Phil, if you're ready. You ready, you ready Becca? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Philip Dixon, Chairman of the Board of Architectural Review, and we welcome you to our Board of <clears throat> Architectural Review Board meeting. It's now six o'clock on February 2nd, 2021. Time for our scheduled meeting to begin. Beginning on the size, depending on the size or complexity of a project, each applicant has the opportunity to present a conceptual or master plan for our review prior to committing funds for a full set of design plans and specifications. Approval of a concept plan means that we might agree with the concept while disagreeing with some of the details. It also means that each phase of the project may, must be submitted at a later date once the plans are more fully developed to obtain the board's final approval for that individual portion of the product, project. Hopefully any disagreements will have been worked out before the applicant comes back before the board. For those of you who may be new to our meetings, our charge is to look at each project purely on aesthetics, design, architecture, height, mass, and scale, and in harmony with the historic district in the town of Somerville. We look at the overall street scene Although we're not required to solicit comments from anyone other than the applicant and the board members, except for demolition requests, we usually choose to allow others to express comments that might help influence our decision-making after the applicant has presented the project and the board members have resolved any questions that they might have. As always, we will review each submittal in the order that it was submitted However, as a first order of business, we must approve the minutes of our last meeting, which were sent to board members for review prior to this meeting. Are there any changes that are needed to be made or do I have a motion that they be accepted? I move they be accepted and submitted. A second? I second it. All right, please respond with yes or no when I call your name. Jeff? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Cecile? Yes. Beth? Yes. Tim? Yes. David? Yes. And mine is yes. <clears throat> the only project on our list tonight is at 608 Central Avenue, new construction of a single family residence. And I know we have the owners on the site and so i'll turn it over to y'all and let y'all tell us about it okay well uh <laughs> this is our first time coming before the town of some real bar uh so this is a new experience for us but we're not new to the town of somerville though um tell you a little bit about ourselves. uh both my wife and i have lived here for uh, pretty much all of our lives uh, i grew up though on the other side of the tracks but migrated over uh, into the town of Somerville, uh, probably back in 98, 99, uh, met my wife at Somerville Baptist Church. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with Nancy Jean Nettles at the town, uh, the uh, Somerville Dream. And uh, then we got married in 2003. My wife's always taught in the school district in, in the Somerville area. Her father was a band director at Somerville High School for 26 years. Um, so we're very, uh, much ingrained in the Somerville area. I have a, a small business here as well. So we love the town of Somerville. We want to see, um, it continue to grow the right way. And we've designed this plan, uh, for this lot that's vacant. And we think it's going to be a showcase, uh, house on central Avenue. And we look forward to start building it. So 
Um, I don't know if Julie wants to add anything. By the way, I'm Brian Mize, and this is my wife, Julie Mize. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, I should, probably should have started off with that, first of all. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, we're just excited to, to build our, our dream house and our last house, by the way, uh, in the town of Somerville and um, ready to get started on it as soon as possible. So um, what questions do you guys have? Well, first of all, welcome to the BAR meeting. And, uh, <laughs> glad you guys are here. And uh, you looks like you've got an exciting project ahead of you. Thank you. Yes, we're very excited about it. Yeah, definitely. It's a beautiful lot. And we're, we feel very fortunate to, to have been able to get the lot. Yes. And definitely um, love to you know, being in town and definitely want the house to fit in and, and look like it's been there for a long time, not, you know, so much like a new house. So that was our goal um, when we started out. Sure. And, and I'm assuming this is, um, it looks like it's on a crawl space. Is that what y'all are planning to do? Or are you trying to do a filled slab? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so we actually previously built a house uh, 16 years ago, not in the town of Somerville, but in Dorchester County up in Ridgeville. So we had uh, experience of building a crawl space mm -hmm. and we decided against that this time. Um, we're going to build an elevated slab uh, is what that's going to be. And, and uh, yeah, we, we don't want to do a crawl space. <laughs> so. And I can't quite read, maybe you guys can make this out for me or tell me yeah. from the gray to the porch, does that say two feet? I can I can't quite yes. read that in the drawings. Yeah, that yeah it's feet. supposed to be a, a two foot, twenty four inch high um, filled uh, raised slab is what we're calling it. Uh, foundation. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I certainly understand uh, your your desire to do a slab on grade. Um, I, I know it's probably less expensive as well. Um, my probably my only advice or my only thought on the whole thing is, you know, crawl spaces are pretty traditional for Somerville, and that's a beautiful lot. That house is sitting up a little higher uh, off the ground. It's going to be beautiful there. My only encouragement may be if you could raise that up a little bit, maybe to two foot eight or something, another course of block or something would be fantastic. Although I'm not going to make that a requirement from my perspective. It's just yeah. a suggestion to you that I think, uh, you know, if it was sitting up a little higher, you would love it. So. Yeah. So yeah, let me, let me tell you a little bit more about our, our thoughts on around the design of the house. Um, one, again, it, this is our last house we're uh, building. And so we thought ahead and tried to build this house from the uh, standpoint of aging in place, if you would. Uh, mm -hmm. So having a, a, you know, a somewhat of a raised foundation, but not too high so that, uh, you know, you don't have too many steps going into the house. Uh, you'll notice on the floor plan on the inside of the house that it's, uh, you know, pretty much all open um, corridors, you know, two foot eight or three foot wide openings, uh, wide hallways, uh, very accessible through the kitchen. So, you know, that if we have to be there in our old age, uh, you know, we, we can be and uh, we don't have to go somewhere else. And so that was one of the things that we try to keep, you know, keep it low. But yeah, and that was one reason too, by the way, we decided to actually add a half the story or a second story to the top because we didn't want to look have it look like it was squashed down we wanted to give it some presence um and not just be flat across the top of a one one story so we did add that to try to accommodate the the stance or the presence from the the road um gotcha. yep go go back to that other elevation real quick back at the two rat right there okay and now you can go back thank you yeah. And, and one other thing, too, you might see that we actually nicknamed this plan the Pine Lake Cottage. And the idea behind this is that that center section uh, where the porch is and just that main first gable is designed to kind of replicate, OK, if you had lived here, you know, 100 years ago or 80 years ago, whatever long ago, maybe you started off by building a small cottage. And then the wings on each side were added on later. So they have a little bit different presence, but that first center section kind of looks like an open uh, or a, a older cottage because it has the open rafter tails and things on the front. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that was one design aspect that we try to 
incorporate that idea of like, you know, it kind of looked like it had been added on to, but still in good taste, you know, and not just obscurely added on to it. Sure. Sure. And, and Brian, you, this is probably something that your builder will work out a detail. Uh, I don't, you, I'm sure you, I know you can't see my mouse, but the, it's okay. on your roof, uh, on your porch roof, you've got yeah. it extending past the edge of the house. And that kind of makes for an odd look on the backside of that because it doesn't have anything to kill into. Um, so you're probably going to need to stop that roof overhang in line with the edge of your house uh, okay. because there's nothing there's nothing to frame there too um, if I'm, unless I guess that maybe that's all in the same plane I, I don't know maybe that's all in the same plane it's hard to tell from that one elevation that I have here is yeah. that, and is that projecting it, out it I does can't. if, if you look at the side view you can see that it it projects yeah, and it, ha it has a like a return side piece that it, so it's going to yeah. be. Right, but see, it projects um, out, so that's going to be sticking out. on. Uh, yeah. It's going like, to be like wings on either side. Um, you don't really have a good plan showing it. Um, and it's, it's going to be a little awkward. I think you're going to end up having to cut that back to line up with the edge of the house. These, okay. these wings on the left and right that you see in that elevation is a good one. They don't frame into the roof because they're proud of the, of the roof line. Okay. Does everybody else know what I'm talking about? I know. I, yeah, to... I 100% agree with you. And I think your home would look a lot um, prettier and more um, in keeping with the character if you cut it back so that the porch roof dies into the face of the the front wall basically that last, that last panel there on the and end. you know what the usual overhang on the sides might be six inches eight inches it doesn't need to be as wide as what you've got so you could make that narrower but also just pull in your column a little bit so that it dies into the face yeah exactly that'd be the thing to do i agree with that yeah. I also had um, a question for you about your brick base. Yes. Your, because the, the elevations aren't consistent all the way around. So on the front, it looks like you have a brick base and then you have sort of like a roll lock course at the top mm -hmm. that would take it step back in. But on the other elevations, it's just shown as a box. So... Uh -huh. Uh, are you intending to carry that roll lock all the way around? Yes, yes. And in fact, we're pr planning on using an actual roll lock design brick, so you have a bullet yeah. edge to it instead of just a forty-five. Yeah. You know, cut brick. Yeah. And I, uh, that would be great to do that and um, have that be consistent. And as I said, it's not clear on your elevations that that's what it does. Okay. And it's a, an issue just comes where you've got your garage only because you have like brick in between the garage doors. Like it's a bit of a funny detail when you have this kind of a, like you have to, you have to make sure that the bricks on the side of the garage door are solid bricks and not part bricks where you see the uh -huh. holes in the brick. Yeah. 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 We, on our, when we built our house, like I said, 16 years ago, we actually used a lot of that same, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm a very detailed person. So, uh, you know, we're not going to, you know, leave things unfinished or, you know, kind of sporadic where you get, you can see holes in the brick or right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I won't be able to sleep in like that. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah. I'll, I'll have it added to the elevation to add yeah. the roll up on, on top. Uh, yeah. Brick course. And I know that, um, you know, Tim was noting that the two foot high base, mm -hmm. he wouldn't hold it up, uh, the design approval based on just two foot high, but I wholeheartedly agree that it needs to get raised to just give it a little bit more, uh, a bit more in the keeping of the character of older homes, but equally just the proportions. And it's easy enough to um, to do that still even with a raised slab to go a bit more than two feet that's not a difficulty yeah well uh, again uh, one of the 
I guess we can try to maybe go in between the two measurements, but if you go to 30 inches or more, you, you have to add uh, railings. And that's another thing that we didn't want to have to add. No, you, do, you don't need to go as high as needing railings. I get that. Yeah. You might not want to have that look. Yeah. But I do think that two feet is, it's a little low. I mean, by the time you yeah. put any foundation planting, you absolutely don't see it. So you're paying a lot of money for that character and the look and nobody gets to benefit from it except at the garage doors. Yeah. yeah. So Brian, that was actually the other question that I was gonna have was, so you do not plan to have rails. You want to leave it over yeah. at 30 inch. Yeah, because, okay. uh, you know, it, I think it opens up the house, you know, people can see the windows and, sure. you know, sometimes I think you add too much detail, it can be too much and right. keep yeah. it safe. Actually, a porch without the rails that is beautiful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What's the maximum height off the ground you can go without railing? 30 inches. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, could do, we could do that. Yeah. So talk to me about the, um, like the brick colors that you have and then the samples of color that you have. Uh-huh. Um, do you have a preference for one of these bricks over another? Um, this is, uh, um, mm -hmm. I guess, the three options that we had. There's not, we're not set on one option yet, um, but we, as you can see, all of them have very similar styles, and that's being a um, tumbled brick look, you know, old mm -hmm. style brick, not, not clean, crisp lines, you know, like a new brick would be, so it looks like Correct. it's... Correct, yeah. Yeah, been there a long time. Just the color variations, I think, on the brick itself. Right. Uh, probably would lean more towards, uh, let, me, let me look on my thing because I can see it a little bit better on my uh, actual page. Um, so uh, I think uh, probably like the, the middle one, the sandstone uh, is what it's called. Um, more, I guess, red and black looking, you know, um, I like that over the mixed colors on the left-hand one. Yeah. I do too. We uh, we actually used, um, prior, we used one called Ed's, uh, no, Catawba, and it was very nice. Um, I don't know if I, I could even show you a picture of the house we built prior, but um, I mean, it, it, it just looked like everybody said, gosh, where do you get these bricks from? <laughs> you know? yeah. They looked look like they were little bricks. Uh, and then right. plus when you add the, the bullnose rollock to it too, it just, it just finished everything off, especially like the steps. You know, right. a lot of people, a lot of people don't know you just spend just a little bit extra money. You can make it really look nice and finish it off with not a whole lot of effort. So, right. So, but I mean, if we, if we're looking at colors, we also need to look at the paint. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I'm not quite sure what all the paint colors are there <laughs> well, for. I was going by the um, kind of guidelines and yeah. I think it said have three or four options. Uh, so um, that's what we try to do is try to pick three or four of our options and tell you from a priority list that option number one, that Holly Fern, Sharon Williams color, um, you know, and the oyster shell uh, would be kind of the Your first favorite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reference. yeah, I I think it could be. It's not my favorite, honestly, because I don't think that's um, either hit. Uh, like it, it's it's not. Um, I'm finding it doesn't age well. Is where I come from. Well, and um, we, we drove around too in, in the guidelines, you know, for with the bar, it yeah. says, you know, try to keep in with, you know, what, what's already here, which is what we're right. trying to do for sure. We don't, we, we don't want something to look, you know, out right. of place. And well, I, well, I mean, I love that you've got all of these from the historic Charleston collection. So, I mean, that's, you can't yeah. go wrong with these. <laughs> I think, but, I think, yeah. yeah, but I, uh, but I also, do. yeah, we also just, you know, initially our first thought was white white yeah, yeah um which is why we included that in there too so um right but then it seems like every house in central then there were so many everything on the right hand side of the road is all white, white. <laughs> so yeah. like did we do white i mean i guess you can't go wrong with white but right. but you're 
you got white and you got the yellow and then you've got like a gray color and um and tan there's not right. that many green so we were trying to add an you know maybe another green house right. to it we like that color mixed with that kind of off-white trim right. um so you know and I, we didn't know exactly how this would go as far as the colors so right. i don't know if you guys had to absolutely approve the colors right now or is that something that we work through in the process of building the house because to be honest you know uh when you build the house and you think oh I, yeah i want to paint it this color until you put it on the house stand back look at it from the I road i agree with you. You, you you could have a, no clue what it really yeah. looks like you know and right. so um i didn't know if that's what the process would be is that we come we, back once the house we is built, have, got swatches on the yeah, we have on occasion had uh, had people uh, paint uh, a modest section of siding of several shades and right. pick the one. Sometimes the one on a color card looked great, and then on a big wall look horrible. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. that's all these swatches are from. Is yeah, the they're. Yeah, you know, the Charleston, Charleston historic yeah. Charleston yeah. paper. So. so, and you you also need to consider at the same time is we have no purview over it, but whatever you're going to do on the inside, you don't want to be a shock from the outside when you walk in. If the if you're uh, going to use the green, then it needs to blend nicely with the foyer and. And um, same with any of the colors. It needs to, it all needs to pull together to make a pleasant present presentation. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, Brian, paint colors can be approved at a staff level. So, let's say the board's okay with letting you have time to make that decision if you were to, you know, get into construction or, you know, any point you know, in the permitting process, decide this is the color that we really want. Um, you can come back to me and I can, you know, it wouldn't be a formal meeting, but I can, you know, bring that to the board members, um, you know, and get their uh, suggestions on it. I mean, the only time I usually have to do that is is when it's not a white house <laughs> um, <laughs> right uh, and it's a color that I just don't feel comfortable with but um, it's not gonna be uh, it's not gonna be that uh, I don't even you call it periwinkle blue or something that's on was that on Laurel Street there's there's a house oh, that's I don't like know. I don't know. Hey, Believe I mean, me, not painted that color. To, <laughs> and each door own, <laughs> to each their own. I'm not one to judge, but um, <laughs> there you go. Everybody's got their preferences. I mean, yeah. that that's good. why you stick with white. That you can't go out, wrong. Though. You can't go wrong with white. And so. I mean, typically when a project like this comes before the board, what I prefer to do is to have the board make all the decisions. So it's, you know, yeah. all everyone's all on the same page and I'm not approving something that you know, sure. they're not hearing about. So I, that's going to be up to the board <clears throat> if they want to handle it that way. But uh, I I could definitely do that. There's a process set in place for that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't have any problem in, you know, uh, submitting the colors or, you know, even I mean, again. Brian, Brian yeah. what, I'd, what I'd really recommend that you both do is just wait. I mean, in general, the Charleston historic colors are a great place to start. But I think as you start making selections on the interior for your finishes, for your cabinetry, for tile, you're gonna be getting into a color scheme for your home. And as, um, as Cecile noted, you really do want to have this coherent look from inside to outside. And I think as you start picking things, then there will be an exterior color that you uh, fine tune to go with that. And then, you know, we can either have a look at it and, and sunlight's always better. We've often found that oh, yeah. like when we look at it in the sun, it makes a huge difference. Right. But, I, but I would encourage you to uh, coordinate some of your interior colors and finishes um, just so that you do get that really nice, um, coherent feel to your home. 
Right. I appreciate that. And, you. you know, again, we, I was just going by kind of the guidelines and I didn't want to submit right. something that it was half baked and, you know, right. prepared enough and didn't give you guys something to look at of kind right. of what my thinking was. So, right. Well, it's a lot easier to get it done earlier. So you did the right thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think, I mean, uh, probably all of us would agree in general that any of the bricks you've chosen, while we might each have our individual preferences, none of them would be uh, a, so, bad, a bad choice. None of them are out of line. Uh, I think the only, the only no, thing is, is that if, if we hold off with a color, just don't forget that you still have to come back and get a permission. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. last thing you need is to have find a note on the door saying right. uh, you messed up. <laughs> Believe, believe me, I, yeah, we don't. I, I'm a rule follower. The detail, the, the detail guy won't forget. I, I, he won't. That's yeah. what I have to do that for every day at my job. I have to follow the rules. <laughs> Otherwise, I get in real big trouble. So, <laughs> well, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but as far as the break is concerned, personally, I'm, I'm okay with any of the three. And yeah. so, I, you know, if he wants to select from one of those three, I would be okay with that. And then just we'll find out the final paint color when he gets closer. Yeah. yeah, I I do have I have um, a preference on the bricks. I don't particularly care for the one on the left. Okay. I think well, I think we're leaning yes. Well, the one in the middle is probably my favorite, and it yeah. also yeah. depends on what color the house is going to be. Yeah. Right. What, what, um, I, what I actually was going to plan on doing too is if it's feasible, um, once we start construction, as far as like getting the foundation and and um, the walls go into, we can even, again, even do like a mock-up, you know, once we get the materials that we would, you know, have and like do them in three different mock-ups and let you come by and look at the mo like a mock-up and, you know, um, because I think, again, like we've always you know, said, I think here is that it's easier to make a choice once you see it all together yeah. and actually have a mock-up. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Brian, like the cost of uh, an error, or that feeling afterwards, like, eh, that wasn't quite perfect. For the sake of the little bit of time and effort to do a mock up, it honestly makes such a huge difference. And it's, it's worth it. Yeah. I would also like to um, uh, put in a, a good word for foundations off the ground, <laughs> um, we built our house so that it would fit in the neighborhood. And so consequently, it's farther off the ground than typical new houses. And I cannot tell you how wonderful that space underneath this house has been over the years. And I can't tell you how many thanks I have had from plumbers and air conditioning people and <laughs> and the the bug man and they you know they say oh yeah we'll do so and so and then when they look under there they say oh <laughs> and they're thrilled that that we have plenty of room for them yeah, to it's, fall it's in that, that uh, is not that is not a reason to build <laughs> extra foundation but i'm yeah. telling you it is a benefit it's funny and, you mentioned that though cecile because the house we built in ridgeville it, the lot actually sloped uh, to the right. And so the right-hand side of the uh, house actually was a, a walk-in basement area. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was so big under the crawl space. And I mean, we had it encapsulated and all that stuff. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was a lot of maintenance though too, you know, just having to crawl under the house and all that stuff. And so when you put all that stuff up and above and in the attic uh, and get your, you know, AC, from underneath the crawl space and in the attic it makes for a healthier home uh, and that's one of the other things too by the way is that um, and this is not I guess in the purview of the bar but it is in our construction details is that we're trying to build this house as a, a more of a building science house where it's it's very uh, healthy house uh, air efficient quality uh, high grade construction so um, you know uh, a little bit different than just any like regular track home builder is going to just going to throw up you know two by fours and regular sheathing and stuff like that so we're going to we're taking our time and, and making sure we choose the right materials uh right selection 
and really want this to be a house that, you know, um, again, we're going to live in for the next 30 years or more. <laughs> so so we, we'll, we don't want to do it the wrong way. That's for sure. Well, well I, I just, I just wanted to make my feelings known about that. I'm, I'm not in favor of slab foundations in the historic district. We've been through this before um, with other applications and, and um, I'm just not in favor of it. And, um, and as for getting older, I know about that too. <laughs> and um, yes, it's, it's harder carrying the groceries in and all that sort of thing. But um, in, the, in the long run, um, I think that, that you would have a house that will suit that property better if yeah. you get it a little bit more, uh, more off the ground. Yeah, um, we can do that for sure. We can go up to that 30 inch level on the foundation. That's not a problem. But again, I've personally lived in a crawl space house. I've worked on crawl space houses. I've crawled under the ones in Charleston with my dad when uh, I was a kid. He was an electrical contractor by trade and I've replaced knob and tube wiring under those houses and it's not fun. It, it, and of course, those are real low to the ground. You can barely crawl through them. Uh, but, you know, we prefer to build on a, a slab, race slab. That's that's actually the future of home building is raised slab versus crawl space, especially in the Charleston market because of, of the humid conditions and the, the moisture, the rot, you know, all the problems you have with crawl space. And that's why we had to encapsulate the last house we built is because, I mean, within a year of us building it, we had moisture condition problems underneath there that we never thought we would have problems with. And we, we put a vapor barrier down, we did all the right things. And the only way to solve it was to spend, I think it was $15,000 back then to encapsulate the thing. And, uh, you know, this is when you build a one story house, that's not something that you want to have to do with how wide this thing spread out. It'd be different if maybe if it was a, a two story house where you're, you're, you know, your floor plan is not as spread out. Uh, maybe you could afford to encapsulate it versus uh, you know, just building a race slab, but, but we also didn't want to build it too high because I think, you know, the houses right next door to us, you know, the live Oak village, uh, houses, those are definitely, unfortunately they're not in historic district, but to me, those are out of place, right? They're, those, those houses just look like brand new houses that, you know, drive under elevation, all that kind of stuff. You know, I don't, I don't think you want a house on this lot to be a, one that's that high either. So, <laughs> you know, we we de definitely want, didn't want to go that route, but. The only, the only big problem with a slab is your plumbing. If you ever have a problem with the plumbing, you, uh, somebody can come in there with a jackhammer and take right. your slab out in order to uh, get to the plumbing. Well, that's, that's yeah, that's definitely a concern with slabs, but we're not going to put any water pipes in the slab. Everything's going to be coming down from the top. Uh, the only entrance point would be, I guess, just the one line coming in through the the um, sidewall. Uh, well, your drain is going to have to. Your drain yeah, is going to have to. Yeah, waste drains will have to go, but usually they don't hold that much water, um, and you know you can snake those pretty easy. It's different if you have a um, water fitting break and then the concrete swells and cracks and all that stuff and and I, I i do have a lot of construction background that's why actually we're presenting and not our builder uh because you know yeah. i'm gonna have a lot of hands-on uh involvement with the project uh, again we built the house 16 years ago we acted as or I acted as a general contractor on that we didn't use a builder and people were very surprised we got it st from start to finish built in nine months and they were like why don't you have your builder's license? <laughs> so I actually ended up getting it, but then you never thought we'd build another house again and, and actually let it go in 2015. So, um, so anyway, you know, so I've got a lot of construction background and, and I appreciate your, your feedback and stuff on, on the things with the foundation. But, you know, again, I think I've done my homework and this is, you know, what we'd like to build. Um, I, I hope, you know, you guys wouldn't turn it down because of a difference. No. In, in perspective on whether it's a crawl space or a slab, but 
Um, and, and believe me, I, I'm Actually, trying to. Actually, we that. have before. Uh, we have, well, we didn't turn it down, but there were two of us who voted against it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's something to be said about a crawl space house, too, because believe me, concrete doesn't give. So when you walk on it, you know, the, the wood, you know, beams and things tend to give a little bit better than than the uh, concrete, but uh, we've actually come up with a, a good flooring option that will solve, you know, that uh, comfort uh, on the inside of the house. But, you know, um, so we're, we're looking at all kind of different things uh, and making sure we make the right decision um, on this. Cause again, this is a, a huge investment uh, by, you know, <laughs> by no stretch. Yeah, that's, that's for sure it's good that you've got that kind of background and knowledge because needs to be well thought out. It sounds like you have. Oh yeah. <laughs> My wife would say <laughs> I think about That's it all he does when he's not at his other <laughs> real job. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've got a four, a four foot crawl space it's under mine and I love it. That's yeah. what we have. It's easy to. to get to and there's no no right. moisture problems. Yeah. Right. I think, right. I think that's what we're close to what we had before as well. And in fact, that, like I said, that one side was actually six and a half feet. You could <laughs> walk underneath it. It had a, a full basement door and everything we hit put on it. So, wow. Hey, yeah. hey, Brian, two, two things I do want to bring up that I would be remiss if I didn't uh, state them. One is on the standing seam roof. Uh, we have some very particular guidelines and uh, just make sure you follow those guidelines uh, about the roof panel, no striations in the panel and the ribs uh, one inch high. So yes. um, that's the, the most historic looking one we can get close to today to match that. Yeah, no, we would, in fact, we probably would like to do the interlocking standing seam uh, roof on those. And that's why we didn't do the whole thing too, because that's more expensive than the, uh sure. the type so sure. just make sure on that interlock and seam roof some of those are an inch and a half high and okay. uh one inch is the is the the guideline spec okay yeah. so it's a little bit lower than some people like but it gives you that more of that historic architectural appeal for it yes yeah. um yeah. and it's uh the one you'll you'll see them like on my house that's what i've got uh in you know, when i re roof my house but uh, and then the final thing is on the windows, we do require uh, simulated divided lights. So yes, they can't yes. just be grids between the glass. Right. They have to have that simulated light on the outside. Yeah, we're, we're actually looking at the Marvin Ultimate series. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got those and I actually love those windows. So oh, do you? Great. Yeah. Well, when, can we uh, come by your house? <laughs> yeah, you sure can. You're welcome to. Uh, Where do you live? <laughs> we've looked at every window that exists. Yeah, I'm 114 end. Rutherford Street. You're welcome to come okay. by. When we okay. redid our den, you know, most of my house is historic, so I don't have those. But in my historic part, I did the Marvin Ultimate double hung, and they are great windows. Right. I highly recommend them. They're expensive, but they're great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have an, uh, another question um, about yes. the the way the house is situated. I can't tell where the driveway is. Now, obviously, I see where the garage is. Yes. Um, uh, when you're standing on the street, it'll be on the right side. So are you planning for the driveway no. to come out? Yeah. Here? So, yeah, I apologize about that. We should have had uh, Scott notate that on the plan, uh, site plan. So... Um, the drive or the road area that's to the left of the house, that is access as an easement on our property back to 612 and 614 Central. Right. That, that would not be our access point to our house. Mm -hmm. Our access point to our house would be what's existing there as what the prior house was using as a driveway. Uh, even though they tore up most of the asphalt right now, it, it still has that asphalt what eight foot, ten foot, um, right away, uh, marking on the road from Central, um, right in, um, right where. Let's see. Let me, uh, let me zoom in on my piece here so I can tell you for sure. Um, but the idea. So, that, so you you don't have to remove. Like, are you going to be in trouble with that thirty three inch oak? No, 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 no. Nah, er, er, everything. Is, our, yeah. yeah, everything's still there uh, as far as the like drivability onto the lot and everything. Um, 
And in fact, we we're, we're not even going to put like a hard surface on the drive, but in front of the garage area. So our idea is to put like uh, either uh, just small gravel, like the, uh, you know, gray type gravel that you would see like like in a country house or whatever. The pea gravel? Yeah. Right, yeah. And um, or like you know, even crushed shell or something like that uh, through there. A mixture of that, but but nothing that's going to be a hard surface between the Central Avenue, that little small piece uh, that's already there, and the garage pad basically from the outside of the. So uh, Brian, you said there's already an asphalt apron there. Yes, that's okay. that's a good word. Yeah. Yeah, the original. Yes. The, the house that was originally there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I thought, so will, yeah. Will, the, will the drive go right up along the property line? Like, no. we, that, like no. you know how there's that 33 inch oak just off the front corner? Yeah. Are you going to be on the right side of that tree? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or actually, yes, right, right on the, yeah, because those, the 31 inch oak and the 33 inch oak, you're going to go to the right of that and then circle it in to the garage. Which is basically what it was like for the other house. Yeah. That was that was prior that was there prior that burned down. We can uh, I can have Scott uh, add that uh, as a. If you guys look on Google Maps, uh, the old house is still there, and you can see that driveway on the mm -hmm. far right hand side. Yeah, and I thought maybe I don't know if y'all looked at the photos um, that I, I sent a link to to. Um, our Google Drive album, but you'll even see my truck parked in the first picture. Like if I was to pull through there. In fact, actually, it, it got opened up uh, there because there was a dead uh, magnolia that we uh, took down already there to the right of that truck. Um, and so it actually gives us even better access through uh, that area. And y'all, the only reason I'm not pulling those up on my computer is this laptop is extremely slow. Um, so I don't even know if I'd be able to get that up, but you should have it in the packet that was sent out. If you just click on those hyperlinks or right click and hit um, open hyperlink, it'll um, pull that up in a new uh, window for you. Is that at um, the back of the packet? Yeah, I accidentally put it behind the oh. fence. Um, oh exhibit um but yeah that drone video is really cool <laughs> i watched it and i thought that was so neat yeah and that that's one other little tidbit too that we would like to uh share this project with the community and uh you know keep people abreast of what we're doing so i'm going to do you know a couple of the different drone videos throughout the project to really one for us but then to two to share with other people you know just the progress and um, I'm gonna, I've got uh, in, the, in the progress of putting up some security cameras to be like time lapse video so that we can you know, archive and, and keep this um, for a record for ourselves, but also just to, you know, for general information. Um, what, what's the siding material? Um, what we're planning on right now is uh, boral. Uh, it's a fairly newer siding. It's not James Hardy, but it's very similar to it. Um, it's actually, I think it's actually better than James Hardy. We actually used the Hardy plank on the previous house 16 years ago. Um, but this boral siding is um, uh, even more uh, dense and it's, uh, it will not absorb water at all. Um, but it's very similar in, in look and feel. And the design of it's not a lap siding, it's actually um, like a cove Dutch lap. So it's actually very similar to Berlin Myers' house. I don't know if y'all have seen uh, Junior uh, that uh, just built his house not too long ago. It's not, I don't think they're in the historic district, but uh, he used a wood cove lap uh, Dutch siding. Um, but I'm not an owner of a building supply place that can just replace side when I want. So I wanted to use something a little bit better and uh, that would last a little bit longer. So what, what is the shadow profile of it? It is a one by eight. So it will have a seven, I think a seven and a 
Okay, yeah, so that reveal. So it's like the architectural arty plank uh, yeah. in terms of the reveal. Right, right. Yeah, there is an architectural uh, series of hardy plank that's thicker and yeah, has a better reveal. So it is a, like that higher grade of hardy plank. And again, I can get samples to you guys. I have some samples of that. If you wanted, you know, for me to you know, bring them to the town, you guys could go by and look at them or something like that. And, uh, or any samples I could, I guess, leave them with Becca or something. We have samples of everything. <laughs> <laughs> the detail guy. Yeah. And by the way, too, I actually <laughs> hand drew this floor plan myself and then just had Scott put it in the computer. So uh, this is a collaboration of my hand drawing and, and his computer skills. So that's how detailed. <laughs> Any other questions? On the back porch, yes. are those doors, are those French doors or are windows? No, those are actually the um, bifold doors. Bifold, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Nana. Yeah. They basically are like, it's like a glass wall. Yeah, and how wide is the porch? 14 feet wide or deep. Nice. And then 43 feet long. Yeah, if you look on the floor plan there. Be so nice. the, yeah. We uh, actually lived at 105 Old Postern uh, for three years recently. Mm -hmm. And they had a 12 foot wide porch and we had people over for a Christmas party and realized that was just still, it was wide, but it was just still a little too narrow. So we wanted to go out 14 feet. And then the 43 feet part just happened to be that size because of the way of the design was. Are we are we ready to make a motion? Yeah, if, if there are no other comments or questions. Will somebody make one? I'll be happy to. So I'll make a motion that we approve the plans as submitted uh, with a slight modification to the front porch roof on the left and right to, to line up with the uh, the house, the main part of the house. And for the, I think that was really the only height. thing. Oh, the and height, the, uh, the height should be 30 inches off the floor, the height of the porch. Yep. You're including that as a condition or a recommendation, Tim? I think after all the discussion, it became a condition to get to 30 inches. So. Did we say maximum of 30 inches? Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a minimum. It's a minimum of thirty inches. Yeah. But if he's going to be without a railing, it's going to be a maximum, also. Well, that's that's for him to decide. But we're saying, <laughs> we're saying it's got to be at least yeah. thirty inches off the ground. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, if it's thirty inches, is he going to have to have a rail? Is he going to have a no. problem with code? No. 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 Okay. No. It's thirty and, inches. And he, thirty inches or less. Yeah, and if you do, just throw a little top soil. I was going to say, I can build up the ground right there. By the right, floor. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Make it 29 if you have to. Yeah. There was yeah. also the um, request for revising the elevation drawings to have the rollock all around with the brick. Yes, I have that uh, too. Correct, yeah. If you'll add that to my motion, please. Yes. And that the color will be submitted later. The exterior yeah. color. That yeah, we can say. Yeah. yeah, we can say final detail to staff, and I'll yeah. reference um, or you know include you guys once I get those. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, if you'll answer it, uh, Jeff. Yes. Rachel. Yeah. Cecile. No. Um, because of the raised slab and with the caveat that I think it is a lovely house and it's going to be a wonderful forever house for the Mises, 
but I have Still voted against that it. before. <laughs> I, I voted against it before, and so I can't, in, uh, in, in good conscience, vote yes for you all. Okay. And I don't want to have to vote yes the next time down the road either. <laughs> we got you. So She's I vote no. <laughs> That's right. Beth? 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 All that Cecile just said, I'm, I'm going to vote no as well. Um, I love the design. It's absolutely gorgeous, but I just um, have an issue with the race lab in the historic district. Tim? Uh, yes, I made the motion. David? Yes. And mine is yes, so it is approved. Thank you. Thank you. So we thank you much for. I'll send you the COA us. tomorrow. Um, and I'll include all the details that were went over, though I'm sure you took very good notes. Um, <laughs> um, but I'll send that to you in the morning. And then if you have any questions about moving forward with the process, you can let me know then. Great. We sure appreciate y'all's help. Thank and, you so uh, much. We'll be sure to get the information back to you in a timely manner too, to make sure we wrap this up. Um, and uh, we appreciate it. And I don't, I don't think you'll... Uh, be disappointed in what we do here uh, again it's gonna we, be beautiful. yeah we're, we're gonna make it a showcase place and <laughs> it's uh it, it's it's definitely town of summerville we like it uh, and love it so um we appreciate your help though well, so good luck on your project you. and welcome yeah. to town all right yeah we'll, we'll be right. looking at tim <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad to see my windows <laughs> all right bye -bye. all right bye bye our um Miscellaneous item uh, is a continuing on fences. Uh, Becca, you want to tell us about what you got? Yeah, so um, the document that I sent y'all um, mistakenly second to last in this uh, packet is, uh, and I apologize, this laptop is so slow. Um, so basically at Planning Commission, this is what was presented, if I can get it centered here. Um, and the planning commission um, didn't really have any comments on it, um, but they uh, voted um, to recommend approval to council. I do not know when um, it is going before council to be voted on or well read twice and then voted on. Um, uh, that was the response I got from Jesse when I said, when is it going before council? And she said, I don't know. <laughs> um, so basically, um, you know, we're not gonna be voting on anything tonight. Um, you know, I just wanted y'all to be aware of where this is at in the process. Um, you know, moving forward, if there is further detail that y'all want to add to the guidelines, um, you know, which again is a living document that we're allowed to edit um, without going before council, just keep in mind that they're going to, anything we edit about fences um, or add about fences is going to have to keep in line with this information here um, that's, that's being brought before uh, council. So, so Becca, let me ask you a quick question here. This says on a corner, you can have a fence no higher than three feet. Is that correct? Is that the way um, I read that? Let me pull it in closer. And we certainly have approved a lot of corners that have fences higher than three feet including my own corner lot with a fence higher than three feet. Yeah, I guess the intent was just to make it cut and dry where, but you know. Those are, those are opaque fences as opposed to non-opaque fences. Right, oh, right, opaque. right, right. I'm sorry. Thank you, David. That's what I was missing. Okay. I was like, I was like, well, I thought it was pretty clear, but yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I just missed the opaque. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, in my, in my mind, this resolves our issue, but if y'all don't think it does, like, you know, let me know. I think it does. Yeah. With that yeah, clarification. Was, that, that, that I was very sense. pleased with the sketch that y'all provided with it. Yeah, me too. Well, we, we borrowed, but, um, you know, uh, just poor Jesse spent, um, 
some time looking through all the different municipalities and surprisingly enough some of them have restrictions in their um, you know historic districts but uh, a lot of them almost all of them that we found didn't have anything in their zoning ordinances about fences so you'd think there'd be nine foot ten foot tall fences everywhere but um, but yeah um, the only other item unless you guys want to discuss this this fence stuff further um, that I have for y'all tonight is um, some pictures of 128 West Richardson go for it okay and I, but I do have to let everyone know I have to leave at seven okay so gonna, that's I'm fine gonna, I'm gonna jump out then that's all right we're not voting on these uh, photos okay. either um, so Bill Bashane um, called me about two maybe a week and a half ago um, and at 128 West Richardson the brick wall um, to the right of this little piggy um, has collapsed. Um, they have moved all of the brick out of the little alleyway there. Um, so this is that front corner. Uh, and this is not, as I'm sure most of you know, the original brick. Uh, the original brick you can see underneath. I wasn't able to get a picture of that with COVID and everything and five people standing there. I didn't uh, couldn't get that close, but um, this alleyway, I think at the narrowest part, um, is 18 inches wide. Um, so their proposal is to go back um, with a, a water, a brick water table. I'm not 100% sure, and neither are they, on how tall that table is going to be, um, but then the rest would be stucco. Um, which is similar to, I believe, the, the next building down, uh, the pink building there on West Richardson. And what the building official and I discussed today is that um, because of the extent of the water damage, and I mean, this is just a piece of styrofoam right here. I, we were kind of baffled by that. There's nothing else there but, but styrofoam. Um, and you can see where it's been chewed through by something. Um, but there's a lot of termite damage. Um, so we discussed the um, option of letting them get to the point where they can get the damaged elements out um, and then get to the point where I guess they're proposing, and Tim, you can kind of probably speak to this better than I can. They want to get to the point where they're going to have dens glass up. Right. Um, and then from there you know, they're going to finalize their design. Um, and my, what, what I thought and what uh, Rich, our building official told them is that um, we wanted them to go ahead and get it, you know, cleaned up as quickly as possible. So the building is sound and safe. Um, but I just wanted to, to let y'all know about it because it's not, um, you know, I don't think it's a small feat. I mean, it goes the whole way back, all the way up to the top of the building. Mm -hmm. um, so they are going, they plan on keeping all of the brick that's remaining here. Um, they, I'm assuming they'll tidy it up a bit um, as far as, because you can see there's some broken bricks and everything in there. Um, the In the picture, the, the caulking looks very, um, or the grout looks, you know, very white, but it's actually pretty similar to the color of the um, of this little piggy next door. Um, so what I told them is that when they got everything stabilized, that they could come back um, and submit details of what they're going to do. Uh, I think their main concern was getting the building safe and, and sound um, and not having to wait on that portion of it. I'm guessing that that was part of the old building that was there that has that has collapsed. Um, Martha Willis redid that block of buildings right there, and my husband had an. In fact, I think he was in that first space there where the train town is. He had an office in there. I will ask him what he mm -hmm. remembers about it. Of course, Bill. You said Bill Boshane. Is that who you said's working on it? Yes, Bill and Ozzy. He should know. But 
I can't imagine that um, that the newer building did that. I don't know. I can't speak to what well, Dr. Willis would build, but I, it, it always looks to me like he built nice things. Uh, he built nice looking things, but he cut a hell of a lot of corners. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean the brick, the brick ties and everything are all rusted, and okay. again, that styrofoam that you see there that can't be that old. Um, and you can, I didn't get a picture of it, but you can see the original brick underneath. Um, you know, at that front yeah. corner, um, but. Okay. That's what I remembered was that there were existing buildings there and he, he redid right. them, which would explain the styrofoam. Yeah, apparently I asked, you know, what, what, how things came about. And, you know, they said that according to the building owner, um, it just started to bow and kind of in the center. And I, once it started to fall, the whole thing came down and I, yeah. um, you know, the, actually this little piggy was without gas, um, and they're going to have to do some reworking of their meter there, I think. Um, but thankfully no one was hurt. Um, yeah. well, hopefully y'all can help them get it back together fast. Yeah. And Becca, I think that's great that they're moving forward. I think they should, um, okay. you know, it seemed to me like they should, uh, the brick return, I know they're gonna to come to us and tell us your proposal, but at a minimum that brick return should, the first six feet or so should go back as brick and then let them transition to something else. Because, you know, if you don't really see it from the street, you know, what right. happens in that you alley can't, really doesn't matter. You can't see it if you're standing right on top of it. If you try to see it, you can't see. It's, right. it's like a crevice in there. Like obviously yeah. you can see that right there. And so we just, yeah. we want at least, you know, the first period of it to be brick before, before it transitions to stucco. So you're saying um, the first six feet deep well, brick all the way up? Without, um, without having looking at it, yes, yeah, some distance. I don't know that it's six feet. Maybe it's three feet, maybe it's four feet, but okay. some of it all the way up so that from when you're walking down the street, you don't perceive that anything has changed there. I Got it. Well, your, your big problem is going to be getting your brick masons in there to, to lay brick. Yeah. They did, it, in. They, did it, they did it one time. You can get in there and do that. It'll be tight. But well, if, they can get, if they can stucco it, they can brick it. Well, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> Old slim. Mm, that's right. Well, and it's, it's not 18 inches wide right there. It's when you get to the back. back right um and I so said i think feet. maybe it's three feet maybe it's four feet i don't know right. something just so that first section looks original so okay um it'll look and, like a column going up that right yeah exactly uh, that'll yeah. be fine hey um back at one thing could you check on uh the window replacement job at rutherford street and hampton street uh that little cottage they just replaced those windows. Um, and I was actually walking today and I noticed it looks like they used windows that don't have simulated divided lights. They're just between the panes. Um, this, this is 302 Rutherford? You know, I did not write down the number. Um, and I know we just approved the work there. But I thought we had said simulated divided lights there. Which, which cottage? It's the cottage we on the corner of Rutherford and Hampton Street. That's 302, and she didn't. She didn't have windows as part of her right. proposal. Mm, gotcha. Hmm. So, and I've. That's oh already God. a kind of contentious one with me. So. Um, yeah, the the window stickers are still on the window, so I'm assuming they're relatively new. Wow. But well. maybe maybe it was before this. Maybe they've been there a long time. I don't know. Maybe I just noticed it as I was walking today. And, You're talking about the one where. We talked about back and forth about a rear deck and yeah, exactly replacing yeah. the front door. Yeah, that's fiberglass. That's, that's three hundred two. Yeah. Well, the windows are replaced. Maybe they're maybe that's old, and the stickers just never got removed from the windows. Well, they got done without approval. All right, done without approval. Well, maybe she thought she was putting exactly the same thing, and she didn't have to have approval. Yeah. Anyway, it bears looking into, doesn't it? Anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll drive by there. 
Okay. I've got to go. Hey guys, y'all all have a great night. Thank you. We gotta have a motion. Well, we can't hop oh, off yet. Oh, the drats. Okay. <laughs> I move. I move. To adjourn. I'm gonna give that one to Cecile, and then I'll say David, you second. Right. Or you can say that we co. <laughs> we co <Yeah>. moved. <laughs> all right, y'all. All good right. Night. Bye, guys. Y'all have a good Take night. Take care. Bye. 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 I don't guess we don't vote. Oh. Vote by oh. turning off your yes. computer. <laughs> I was trying to. Well. Ah. <laughs> I think we all agree. Yeah. That's what I say. Turn, turn the, turn your.